Good morning and welcome to PSJ Java Chat, your morning chat with your favorite PSJ ISD instructional technology integration specialist, where we discuss edtech tools and trends with invited guests and, of course, our morning coffee. In episode one of Java Chat, Melba Reyes from Isaguirre Middle School talks to us about integrating technology and sustainability with her students and how she got awarded a grant for drones in her classroom. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on this Java Chat. It is our first Java Chat for the 2023-2024 school year here at PSJ ISD. And I am proud and have the honor and privilege to welcome our very first guest for the, the school year, Ms. Nelda Reyes. Ms. Nelda Reyes teaches at Isiguira Middle School. We are going to find out a little bit about what she does in the classroom, how she incorporates technology, and get into a little bit of sustainability as well, as that is one of the new initiatives here at PSJ ISD. So uh, let's get started. First of all, thank you very much, Ms. Reyes, for joining us today. Uh, thank you for, for inviting me. It is my pleasure. And let's, and let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and start with our very first question. As you know, we are the Instructional Technology Department, so I want to know what is your philosophy on including technology in the classroom? Um, technology in the classroom. My philosophy uh, for including technology in my classroom would be um, generally to enhance the learning experience of my students. So technology use, I feel, should, you know, should it replace a traditional teaching method? Rather, we should use it as a supplemental for teaching or like a resource tool just to facilitate our teaching and students' learning. So like uh, we can personalize their learning, you know, for students using digital resources. We can foster collaboration. Uh, technology allows us to, you know, give them faster feedback versus, you know, hand them, you know, paper and, and pencil. Uh, and of course, you know, students always favor the gamification. So that's a plus for us as teachers and them as students, you know. So my goal is, you know, just to use the technology to enrich my student, enrich my students' learning wall, you know, keeping in mind, uh, you know, and considering the needs of all students, of course. Awesome. We love that, you know, you we know you use a lot of technology in your classroom. So um, we mm -hmm. know you, you know, follow that philosophy of, you know, using that and promoting that with your students. Uh, what is your vision for using drones for instructional purposes this year? I've heard a lot about that from Marco. Uh, yes, actually, it was something that, you know, my my sixth graders are now seventh graders. They proposed this thing that they wanted to get drones. And I think we just did so many uh, audits that, you know, we they saw so many needs. And, you know, that was one of them that they wanted to do a geographical study. Unfortunately, my sixth graders are now in seventh. You know, so they come over and if they're part of my equal rights team, you know, they will be joining us. But, um, you know, my vision for incorporating these drones for instructional purposes this year would be to provide more hands-on learning opportunities for these kiddos or for my students. Um, you know, just trying to engage them more into that learning, you know, through project-based learning. And of course, you know, always tying in the sustainability focus of the lesson, right? So, um, uh, we the plan is to use the drones this year to conduct a geographical and environmental study using the drones here at RYMS. And uh, what's awesome about it is that some of these kiddos, when I told them, they said, Miss, we can just use Google Earth. And I'm like, we can? And they're like, yeah, you know, back in fifth grade. So some of them did took it upon themselves to actually already learn stuff like this. So I'm like, nice. We do have a partnership with Texas A&M Kingsville and the ag department there and they actually uh you know suggested using gpis which is another platform that you we can use i'm not knowledgeable on it neither are the kids and we haven't been able to meet with them but uh for the meanwhile we'll be using you know um um google earth and and uh they've ex you know they've expressed that, that they've known how to use it and of course um the goal is to capture aerial images um, you know, various shots of aerial images and, you know, uh, map the landscape and, and monitor the ecosystem to, pro you know, propose an eco audit, which will um, allow us to create a communal public space for uh, you know, at our campus, which we currently do not have one. So that's the goal. I mean, drones, however, you know. How did you get the drones for your campus? I, I know people are probably wondering um, how that, how you were able to get those. You know what? And it was kind of like a long shot. It was a uh, I had exhausted it. it I I do go a lot through Eco Rice, and they do fund a lot of our projects. And I had exhausted my money that I could get from them. So, a long shot. I tell them, okay, guys, we can do donors choose. 
So, you know, and then Ms. Lugo, our amazing librarian, you know, she she like tells us, don't choose, don't choose. There's community members that'll do it. And uh, we put it out there and I just shared it on social media. And uh, I, we were lucky enough to partner up with United Airlines and they went ahead and funded 144 drone projects and we were one of the ones selected for it, which we feel super lucky. And the kids actually used it on Monday and it was amazing. They've flown wow. them twice already, so. How many drones did you get? We got four. It was a $2,500 grant. Wow, that is really cool. I, we can't wait to see them. So moving on from the drones, think about uh, some of the trainings that you saw during our conference. What is your favorite tech tool so far that you utilized in your teaching? Um, well, the use of, of, of tech tools, you know, obviously has to be aligned to our teaching goals. And, you know, of course, again, the needs of our students. So I would have to say that uh, before the drones got funded, I utilized a lot of coding and computer science. So I'm like an advocate for coding. And I re I noticed that a lot of my kiddos that, that are struggling or, you know, that, 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 you know, they're struggling with reading. Um, we found ways of incorporating annotations, you know, uh, passages and vocabulary uh, using coding. They love to use Scratch. So I, that's something I had never used because I would use code.org. And now they use, um, they introduced Scratch to me last year. So I'm like, oh my God, why are we animating through Google? You know, it's like, let's use Scratch. That's amazing. And the kids did it. They, they were actually, some of those eco audits were created through Scratch. So I'd have to say that one. I do use a lot of uh, Nearpod, you know, Google Docs, Canva, Screencastify. And as Marco knows, I, I use Spotify because I do have a podcasting channel for my kiddos that is not shared out. But, you know, they don't give any information as far as the, 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 the campus or their names or anything like that. But, you know, I, I just I like to use those kind of platforms so they can collaborate and it just gives them, you know, a, a place where they can amplify their voice. And, um, you know, it's a platform I've I've heard recently, though, and I read through an article that Minecraft is actually being used now to create a virtual um, green cities. So before the kiddos even propose those projects, you know, they can they can create it through the use of Minecraft, which they're very knowledgeable in. Um, so I like to use it's a lot of coding. I prefer I like I love a lot of coding because I know the kids know how to use it. That's so neat that you're using, you know, so much technology in your classroom mm -hmm. and but you're getting the students so involved. I, I love seeing that. And I'm I'm sure it makes them like really excited. And you talked a lot about about the Eco Rise program, so I know that kind of goes with sustainability a little bit, and that's kind of our the hot topic this year at PSJ. That's you know what we're yes. we're working towards. How does technology benefit sustainability here at PSJ and at your campus? Uh, at PSJ and at our campus, well, I think that the best way that technology benefits sustainability for us and for PSJ as a district, uh, it would be by promoting environmental awareness and, and you know, of course, eco-friendly practices. Uh, maybe the integration of solar panels, which was another audit that my kiddos did last year and we didn't get to, you know, uh, get it done. They actually uh, um, proposed an audit of, of being able to recycle the water that's in our retention ponds, you know, and, and using that to sustain gardens that we were going to plant. And we just didn't get to do that because it was so late in the year. Um, the students noticed that the water that was being retained, it stayed there for a couple of days. And, you know, they said, well, what can we do with it instead of letting it, you know, seep into the ground or soak into the ground, get absorbed. Um, we can literally create everything like digital now, including like students journals. So, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, we still have to, you know, them write, you know, and stuff like that, because we do teach them strategies for the start that they have to do on paper. But of course, the online learning platforms and, you know, inter interactive learning tools uh, uh, and these platforms are amazing. So like Teams, Teams has uh, Mr. Cerda, our amazing CLL, as well has, you know, so many uh, 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 things that, that he provides for us, like platforms and things that we can use. But I guess the integration of technology focusing on sustainability efforts allows uh, PSJA and our campuses to reduce the environmental impact. Like instead of running the millions of copies that we're running, it could be virtual, you know? So, uh, yeah, well, you know, it could be online, you know, like those student journals and stuff like that. So we try to, as far as RLA, we're like 95% online. So we very rarely run copies, you know, and of course it advocates for our planet as well. So teaching those kids that, that the importance of advocating for the, you know, sustainability of our planet. That is awesome, uh, Ms. Reyes. I, I really do like your answer in terms of 
cutting down on the amount of coffees. Plus, you get mm -hmm. to you can go into work later and you can get out earlier if you don't have to rely on going to the coffee machine. I always exactly. try to kind of that's <laughs> it's very no, useful. It's very resourceful. You know what? It cuts down on teacher planning time. Right. And that's something that I always try to advocate for when I go to a campus. And sometimes it's it's good and sometimes I don't get the the um, <laughs> response that I want. But still, it's one of those things that here at the Instructional Technology Department, we are trying to go uh, a little bit, uh, you know, more computer friendly and not so, you know, reliant on the copiers. But that is awesome. And, and kind of going on that note, I, I want to ask you a question. How do you improvise a lesson without technology when it becomes available? Because, you know, it does tend to happen every so often. Right. And um, and, and us, me being a sixth grade teacher, you know how we tear down from eight, seven, six to in order to pass out those Chromebooks. So we do have to find ways of, you know, starting our first week or so with with, you know, without the devices. Um, but now that we are so used to, to the use of technology for teaching, you know, uh, without it, it can be a challenge, but it certainly is possible. And, and at all times, you know, hands on lessons, of course, lead to a lot of creative and engaging lessons, which, you know, that we should be able to remove them from the devices for a while and be able to, you know, still do interactive lessons that they do in their groups. Uh, planning ahead, of course, is a very useful, um, you know, uh, uh, planning ahead, it, it, it um, provides for, uh, okay, so if the computers, if the internet's down today or the computers, you know, the uh, 10 kids forgot their Chromebooks or didn't bring them or aren't charged, you know, what what can we do? So planning ahead for those, you know, days or those circumstances, of course, uh, helps. But of course, we can create a lot of question-based uh, lessons where they do hands-on, they create their own anchor charts, and we've done that. Um, of course, technology would facilitate all of this, but uh, they also need to learn that, you know, they can't depend totally on technology all the time because sometimes it does break down. It doesn't work. Uh, so they have to pull out, you know, the uh, hardcover dictionaries and the sources. You know, of course, they hate to because it's easier just to click on there and open it for themselves. You know, pero por ni modo, you know, uh, we like to have like Socratic seminars, discussion groups. Uh, where we debate topics and and you know create simulations of different you know if we're reading a passage okay so let's debate about it or and then of course it leads to the writing that we're having to do now you know so well i guess across you know uh great levels in content um but yeah awesome great answer do you know that there's also like ways to teach coding without having to use technology you can use offline coding and that's uh, really cool to look into. Sometimes when the when the internet is not working and you want to do coding, you can do sequencing also with offline coding. And that's something that I just remember because uh, Debbie and I used to do coding uh, with uh, uh, CS first. And one of the first lessons was with offline coding. So it was kind of cool with that. Um, when did you know that using technology in the classroom was more beneficial to student learning than traditional learning methods? Um, I would have, I would, I hate to say it, but I would have to say during the pandemic. I mean, I feel so blessed that, you know, I, I, I did go through the technology. Uh, I, I'm a technology, I have a, a master's in technology. So I honestly, I'll be honest, I didn't suffer at all and I loved it. And the way that we were able to engage these students, you know, even during virtual learning, the fact that a lot of them came back and re signed in, you know, re logged in. You know, lets you know that it's it just facilitates it for them more. Uh, I guess I would also have to say that when my you know my own kiddos were struggling, my children, you know, at one point, I went out there and I sought some technology apps, you know, because some of us, you know, we we can't afford tutors and stuff, so it's like okay, let me see what I can find online. When I saw it working for them, I said, huh, this might work for my students too in class. So you know, of course, there's a lot of t uh, platforms out there and apps that we can utilize, but. You know, being able to just narrow down what works for our students and what works for us as teachers, you know, is amazing. So when I saw that, that it, some of these kiddos were able to, uh, of course, not 100 percent, but some of them are able to grow. You know, it's like technology is an amazing, amazing resource for that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Debbie, I Debbie, think you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I was like, oh, I'm muted. I'm just talking away. <laughs> so now that we do kind of see you as like a master in technology, you know, using that with your students. So kind of like a master teacher using that. But we do still have some teachers that are reluctant to try technology integration in their classroom. So do you have any advice for those teachers? 
Um, I guess like, um, well, I guess that many teachers like may initially feel, you know, reluctant in a way to incorporate, you know, integrate technology into their classroom for various reasons, of course, you know, like concerns with learning curves and, uh, you know, disruptions. Uh, of course, nowadays, a lot of our kiddos misuse technology in, in a lot of ways. But, you know, if we, uh, um, you know, if, um, I guess I would tell them that our students are a generation of students that were born with a device literally in their hands. So they're very, very well versed in using it. Uh, so I guess a slow and gradual incorporation of, you know, manageable, of, of course, tech tools and activities that, you know, would be uh, conducive for the teacher. And, you know, uh, of course, as well, there are there are um, a lot of amazing people that we can reach out to. I mean, even Marco, I don't know how many times sometimes I message Marco, hey, I'm struggling with this, buddy, you know, and, and they'll help us out. You know, our CLLs on campus, our, our librarians are amazing. Other teachers are on campus as well. You know, they're very knowledgeable in the use of technology. So just go out there and look for help. Like, don't be afraid to ask for help. And also, I mean, don't be afraid to make errors in the actual use of technology. You know, because the uh, ones that are going to, you know, get you out of the, the the trouble you're in are the kids. You know, oh, I've used it or miss, try it here, try it there. You know, like Monday when we were flying drones, I've never flown drones. And the kids figured it out in about five minutes. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> so, And I had tried it for a weekend. And I'm like, they did it in five minutes. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, so I'm like, I felt a little, you know, I, I mean... <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, uh, I love to ask and tell my students that, you know, even if, you know, we know, I still ask just because you never know. It could be a better answer or a better, you know, solution to it. So, yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to use it. Just, in, you know, integrate it in there and try it out and eat slowly. And eventually you'll see that it's less work for us as teachers and it's more engaging for the students. Hey, hey Nelda, I, I want to I want to ask you something. I, I forgot I forgot to put it in our our list of questions, mm -hmm. but I, I always ask you about it every time I go to your your classroom. Uh, for those who do not know, uh, at the end of last year, you were you were using um, a lot of audio equipment to do uh, podcasts with the students. And I want to I want to ask, uh, what are, what is your? I know you got uh, started late in the game last year when it was toward the end of the year, but what do you plan on using with uh, with your audio equipment? What do you plan on doing with the kiddos as far as uh, podcasts are concerned? Because as we're doing right now, we're in a podcast as well, and so uh, I know that you you value that a lot. And so uh, explain uh, explain that a little bit to us. So like one of the things that I like about technology is that you can give the students their own autonomy to be able to choose or select whatever tool they want to present with. So after they do their PBL and it does not take away from my lessons because PBL is totally done in my rotation. So it's one station that I put for them and they get to go to it twice a week. So they work on sustainability. They pick their own topic. And in addition, they picked, uh, you know, the platform they want to present it in. It'd be Nearpod, it'd be, you know, uh, Google Slides, whatever they want. And podcast is one of their you know, options that they have. So that's really what I use it for. Uh, they can either do it without video, they can do it with video. And a lot of them know, I want to be like my favorite YouTuber, you know, and they want to come out so like us, you know, that they're here. And they'll literally hold a podcast with each other, you know, and or sometimes they say, I want the whole room to be, you know, my audience. And they'll pull the audience and they'll, you know, question them. So it's amazing for that, you know, bringing out that, uh, those kiddos that are afraid to speak out in class or whatever, it's a way that I've seen will will engage them into wanting to participate, especially because they do it in a group. Like it's a group of three or four kiddos that are actually podcasting together and they get to choose if they want the whole class or they don't. Wow, that is super cool. Do you use a specific uh, software for that? It, it's a Spotify and it's for free. You, so Spotify. I don't pay for it. you, cool. yeah, you can pay for it, but the free version, it works just as well. <laughs> awesome. Um, so let's go to business now. Let's talk about Star 2.0. Star 2.0 has various question times like fill in the blank and multi-select and drag and drop. What or strategies would you recommend getting students prepared for this year's end of course tests? Um, I think what we've seen that that drill and kill doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I mean, it, it can work, but you literally have to do it all year. So I think a combination of strategies and resources, uh, there are Star 2.0 practices practice tests and sample questions provided in the actual TEA website. The kiddos can go in there and they can use materials, you know, that are closely aligned uh, with the format and, you know, the content of the actual test. Uh, others that, that I have utilized or we have utilized here on campus would be like, you know, Edulastic, 
formative assessment, dead puzzles, quizzes, the uh, gym kit is very popular, Nearpod is very popular, and you can either get lessons that are, had already been created by the teachers or in the Nearpod library, or it allows you to create your own. So I've, we've gone in there, even in Google Docs, it allows us to integrate now and create a, a practice where they do the actual drop down which is the inline, I believe it's called the inline, you know, where they select the question and that's amazing for, for you know, for the grammar part of the test. Uh, so there are also, you know, practice sets that are available now in Google Classroom. We noticed that too, that you can create the practice sets in there. Those allow you for a lot of the fill in the blanks, the drag and drop. Google Slides is amazing for the drag and drop as well. But uh, yeah, Google Slides is like, the kids want to use something more innovative now. Uh, so, you know, uh, there are a vast majority of apps already, you know, embedded in, and ready to use or available to create and assign. So ultimately, I say stick to like two or three of them that work for you. You know, don't get overwhelmed either, you know, but um, you can use like two or three that yet you see that the kiddos are engaged with and that you're very, you, that you can get very well versed in, you know. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, thank you so much for that response, Ms. Reyes. We have one more question for you, and I just want to ask, in uh, in your career of teaching and utilizing technology and in a lot of your daily activities, I just want to ask, what was one of your more, more proud moments in using technology in the classroom? Um, I would have to say the podcasting. I mean, the podcasting is something that I hadn't, and, and again, it was a grant. I, I didn't, I went out there and said, hey, let's see what happens, right? I put it out there, it got completely funded, and I'll be honest, I haven't paid for any of the equipment I have. They do have a hydroponic system that was totally funded as well. Uh, so it's a lot of people out there in the community that actually help to fund teacher stuff that we want to do with the kiddos. So when I got the podcasting, I was like, oh my God, how do I integrate this? You know, how do I embed it into what the kiddos are doing? And, you know, a lot of them, believe it or not, they love TikTok. They love, you know, so they already know how to record. They're, they're amazing in front of the camera. They're amazing in front of, the, you know, just recording themselves and having the, that dialogue with each other. So when I integrated or introduced the podcast, I introduced it in one of my enrichment classes uh, to do uh, cartoon scripting for using a particular genre. And they created a script and then they had to podcast about it. And I said, you know what? I was hooked. And I said, this will totally work for my kiddos in class. Now I have to figure out how to, in, you know, embed it. And, you know, it, it works amazingly for PBL uh, through sustainability. So I'd have to say that one, you know, I was I'm very impressed with the, what the kids can do. Uh, that is uh, that is really awesome. Um, Nelda, we really appreciate you being on our very first episode of our Java chat for this uh, school year. Um, you know, they're, 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 I, I was very intentional with with the you know the teacher that you know when we we're like oh who's gonna be our first guest i was very intentional about who was gonna be and where you where where they were from because of everything i'd seen and i know valentine and debbie and and uh the rest of the team might have not you know seen uh what's going on in your class as, as much as me but I, I really wanted to bring that into the spotlight i really wanted and uh, i really wanted uh, other teachers at psjisd to know what what you do, that you incorporate technology, you incorporate podcasts, you incorporate sustainability, and, and it still goes with your scope and sequence of what you do mm -hmm. around the uh, for the year. And so I just kind of wanted to bring that to the forefront. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Uh, East Gator Middle School is an awesome, awesome school. And I just want to say thank you so much for being with us today. I don't know if you got anything to add on, guys, Valentine, Debbie. I just want to thank you. I, I have, I have what. Th I have one oh, thing really now. quick, like it, it can be done, it can be done without the support of administrators. So I thank my administrators, Mr. Peña's amazing, you know, Ms. Ms. Duenas, that they allow me to do my crazy stuff in my classroom and, you know, they leave me alone, <laughs> they let me do it, so, you know. And thank you for being um, an innovator and reaching out for those grants and your kids are, your students are so fortunate to have you to get those uh, awesome experiences, so thank you. You're on mute oh, you're, now, Val. You're, you're, you're muted, Val. I was like all excited. I was like, yeah, and I want to see that podcast <laughs> thing, and I want to see the the, the drones. I, I love gadgets. I'm like, I'm like, Debbie and Marco and David know that I love my gadgets, so I'll be really excited to see that happening. Like, I'll be like, ah. I'll yeah. share the videos with you all. The very first one, there was like about a five-minute recording of grass. 
<laughs> okay. So we hey, figured it that's out. Good. We turned that, it that's on. That's sustainability so. right there. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Nelda, and, and uh, you probably will see us sooner rather than later because uh, not only me but uh, the rest of the gang here at Instructional uh, Technology want to see uh, how the drones are going. So thank you so much for being here, and thank you for sharing uh, all of the the experiences and wisdom that you have with us today. And maybe we oh, can thank you, you can for start. Having me on. You can start inter-campus mail with drones. You never know. <laughs> That's what I said. There's no need to leave the room, guys. If I, if I need to read it to a teacher, we can literally fly a drone that way. <laughs> Drop something off. You know what? One of my kiddos actually said, Miss, do you know that uh, one of the, the, what they're used for on the field, and one of the, the teachers was telling them how do they're used for crop, uh, for, uh, in the crop field to, to, you know, I, I'm assuming to put pesticide or something on the crop. So it's amazing what they're learning with them. But wow. thank you all very much for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. Have a great day, Nelda. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.